everyone, welcome to my channel, Everyday I'm Mothering. So today I'm going to be talking about Curiosity Chronicles. And if you've been following my channel, you know that we use the Torchlight curriculum for homeschool. Well, Curiosity Chronicles is the main history component for Torchlight in the later levels. But there's been a lot of confusion on some of the message boards, even people I've talked to, about what to order for Curiosity Chronicles, how it works, what activities are included with Torchlight. It just seems to be something that, you know, you can easily get confused with because there's so many options when you go to order it. So I wanna go through exactly what Curiosity Chronicles is, what to order so you get the pieces that we've talked about. Like us, Elena loves the Minecraft piece, so I definitely wanna tell you how to make sure that you get that piece when you're ordering. And then also just a little bit about it so you can decide if it's something you like. Curiosity Chronicles is essentially a history textbook, if you will, but it is not a complete curriculum. So this is something that you would either add in to a curriculum you already have, or it's something that is a component of a curriculum, like for example, Torchlight. So if you don't know anything about Torchlight yet, I do have a video here where I talk about it in general, and then I also have level specific ones, but it's our main curriculum. But Curiosity Chronicles is the history piece that it uses throughout the year. So a lot of the activities and other things build onto whatever is introduced in that chapter. Here's an example of one of the books from Curiosity Chronicles. So you can see, I mean, it is a large book. And like I said, it's more of a textbook style book that you would think of more so than like a literature book or like a fun, fast read. So what makes Curiosity Chronicles different and stand out from other history books out there is that it is secular. So what that really means is that while it may talk about different religions from a historical standpoint, it doesn't show preference for one religion. So the context of the information is not based around an assumption that one religion is correct or presented as facts. It really just gives you a clear cut look at history, where different religions play different roles in it, but it doesn't include you know, one specific religion as the true religion or factual or give more weight to one than the other. And that's a really nice thing when you're trying to put together a curriculum that is as fact-based as possible. When we put together our homeschool curriculum and picked what we were gonna use, it was so important to me that we really focused on the content. I really wanted to make sure my girls were getting as much information as they could. And it was looking at it from different perspectives, teaching as much about different religions or about the world as we could, including diversity, you know, really things that are gonna inspire learning and questions. It was not about founding a program that was based around religion and going from there. I really wanted to focus on the content. And for so many parents, I know that's really important. So that's one of the benefits of a secular program and then specifically a secular history book is that you can feel comfortable giving this to your child, going over it, you know, regardless of what religion, if any, you may be a part of, you can be assured that this is really coming from a historical standpoint and providing unbiased information. Well, as much as history can be unbiased, which the author explains, you know, obviously when an author is writing history, they're always, you know, picking and choosing what they're going to include because there's just so much but we have been really happy with the content of Curiosity Chronicles. So currently the way Curiosity Chronicles divides up history is that you have a volume for ancient history, medieval history, and then modern history is actually divided into two separate volumes. And those correlate with the Torchlight level one through level three. Now Torchlight does have level four out right now, but it's missing the history piece with Curiosity Chronicles because they haven't released that next volume yet. Once they do, it will be tied in, I do believe, to Torchlight level four. But for now, Curiosity Chronicles has the four options available. So another really interesting thing about how Curiosity Chronicles presents its information is that it's done in dialogue form. And this is really different from how you would traditionally think of a history textbook where you know, you're really just learning about the dates or the facts and reading through it. In this book, there are two characters, Ted and Mona, and they really go back and forth and have a dialogue. And there's sometimes a little bit of fun added in or silliness or commentary. But for the most part, Mona is presenting the information and Ted is asking questions, clarifying, or, or giving some of that comedic relief throughout. Now, there are times that Ted does take over and talk a little bit more. But I will say from, you know, probably a stereotypical standpoint, he does seem to be more excited about 
the war and fighting aspects. And Mona is definitely the one who is coming from a place of more knowledge and teaching him. So there are definitely some gender differences there. And so far we've seen that throughout both the volumes. So I don't know if that will change, you know, as you move into modern history or not. But for ancient and medieval, that seems to be the theme. Now, it's not so blatant that I think a boy would be offended or anything like that by it. But just to know, I mean, it is there. But we really enjoy the way the dialogue's set up. I know some people struggle with it and don't really enjoy it. But for us, when we read it, I will read the Mona piece and Elena will read the Ted piece because usually it's shorter and she's able to, you know, read that more easily when we were just starting out and not be so thrown off with all the terms and the dates. But we really like reading it like that. It gives us a nice chance to talk. It breaks it up a little bit. I do think probably if you're reading this out loud, the back and forth with the dialogue just by yourself could probably get a little annoying after a while. And I know a lot of people actually enjoy the audio version of this. So I could see that being really beneficial as well. For us, we don't use the audio just because Elena doesn't really do that well with audio. And honestly, neither do I. So she's like me in that aspect. We like having the physical book to hold and look at and see the pictures. But I do know that the audio is a nice alternative for a lot of people. So that's just a broad overview of Curiosity Chronicles program. But now what I really want to talk about is what you order when you go to purchase this for the Torchlight program or like I said, just in general if you want to. But specifically for Torchlight, it only links the main like textbook style book. So if you go in there and you just buy, for example, I'll talk about level two since that's what I'm holding here now. If you just go in and buy Medieval History, then this is what you will get. It is simply the book with the dialogue and the information and you don't have to get anything else. I mean, this is enough. This, this is what's mentioned in the Torchlight program. And if you get this one, I mean, you're good to go and that's fine. And you can choose whether you want PDF so you can print it off yourself or you can go ahead and order it printed um, like we did. I just prefer to do this when I'm using an actual book versus like trying to read it off my tablet or print it myself or anything. I like to get the book. Or like I said, you can do the audio version. And then there are a lot of add-ons that you can get. And I will say from my perspective, the website isn't that user-friendly. It's a little confusing with it all, but there are several things that you can add on to your purchase that I would recommend you do. And there are several bundles available, so you can pick and choose which things you want to add if you want to go with a bundle, and they'll mix them up. We typically will do the bundle with this being the hard print and then everything else doing PDF, and I'll just print everything else. So there are some options there, or you can just individually pick and choose. But the main things that you can add on will be your instructor guidebook, the student activity book, and then the student interactive notebooks. And now there's also, I believe, like a timeline for level one, which we got and didn't really end up using. And I believe there's probably something similar for level two, but we didn't even get it this year just because realistically I didn't do it last year. So I knew I wasn't going to do it this year, but we do always get the student workbook and the instructor workbook. Now the student interactive notebook, we got that in level one and Elena really enjoyed it. And there are a couple options with that. You can get one where everything's already written in and that's what we did for Elena since she was younger and just learning to write. But it was mostly coloring, cutting out, and then you would attach it into a notebook and she had you know, a page for each chapter and it was a really fun notebook she enjoyed. Now I would have gotten that for level two, but just like I said, it's a little confusing. I actually didn't even see that when I was checking out and I thought they just didn't have it for level two, so I didn't get it this year. I'm thinking I might go back and just get the PDF now, but they do have it for level two and Elena does enjoy it. It's a little bit more hands-on. So I think it's a fun extra to do and just reinforce what you've been learning. So the other two we got last year and we got again this year as well. And the first is a student workbook. So what we do, like I said, I get those in PDFs and I just print them off and put it in a binder for Elena. And essentially what this is, I mean, it's almost like busy work in a way. And that's kind of what we use it for. Honestly, when I'm working with my other child, I'll let Elena do this, but it also does help reinforce what they've learned. You know, with history, especially at this age, it can be overwhelming with the dates, the names, you know, geography, where everything is, when it's happening, new terms. So I do think it's helpful to have something where they're able to go back, look at it themselves and try to answer questions just to help them figure it all out. And she loves workbooks. So she's actually really enjoyed doing this for each chapter. It's pretty much the same. Well, they will match up some vocabulary words, answer some questions. 
There's usually some map work or coloring involved and occasionally like a word find puzzle or something like that. They're not that long and it's not that difficult. I let Elena just use her book. She can go back, look up the answers and just fill this in on her own. Now, if I felt like I had to cut something out financially from buying Curiosity Chronicles, it would probably be this piece. Um, just because if you're doing the interactive, it kind of does the same thing. And I think that's a little bit more fun for them. But if you don't do the interactive notebook, then I would definitely suggest doing this or, you know, doing both and having them be able to do this on their own is nice as well. Then the other thing that we get is the instructor's guide. And again, I just get that PDF. I print it out and just stick it in a binder for me to have. So the instructor guidebook gives you an overview of the key people, places, things that happened in the chapter as well as providing some comprehensive questions that you can ask and some hands-on activities. Now that might be something that's really useful to you. Honestly, we don't use any of it. The only reason that I bought the instructor guidebook and the only thing that we use out of it is the Minecraft activity. So every chapter has a section for building something in Minecraft relating to what you learned in that chapter. And Elena loves Minecraft. And I knew going into level one, this was one of the selling points for me when looking at the curriculums, people were talking about building, you know, in Minecraft things to go along with each chapter. I knew she was going to love it. So at first I was a little confused because I thought it was part of, you know, Torchlight, but it's not. So it's part of the Curiosity Chronicles instructor guidebook. It's not in the student workbooks. It's only in the instructor piece. So if your children love Minecraft and you're looking for that piece, this is where you have to buy it to get that. And it is so far in level one and level two. I don't know about level three because I haven't done that yet, but we have done all of ancient history and now we are several weeks into medieval history. And Elena gets a new world in Minecraft every year and she sits down on Saturday mornings and she does this with her dad while I take Adeline to gymnastics. But her and her dad love having this time. Elena looks forward to it all week. Well, they will sit down and they will build whatever it is that's required for that week. And then she also gets to tell him about what she's learned and all of that while they're building it. But obviously your child can do that on their own too. That's just something that they enjoy doing together. But the Minecraft piece is really fun and really neat. So I do highly recommend that you get at least this PDF if you think that's something your child will like. And you know, they're getting to apply everything they've learned in a fun way of building it back. And Elena's just really enjoyed that piece. Now, before you buy any of these things from Curiosity Chronicles, if you can and you have time, I know you may not now if you're already into homeschool and having to pick something quickly, but if you can try to sign in and get on their mailing list and wait because they do run sales quite frequently. So you can get a lot of this stuff on sale through that website. So that's a little bit about Curiosity Chronicles and what the book's like and what you may want to purchase. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click below to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already so you can check out all my other videos like this, specifically my homeschool playlist if you are still looking for curriculums or just wanna find out a little bit more about things I mentioned here. Bye everyone.